Hello everyone, hope you are doing all well. I'm going to talk about chapter 4. This chapter we are going to talk about the periodic table and talking about elements as one type of pure substances. Here before going forward, we need to have a quick review in history of chemistry. So to may find out what happens in the last centuries, last decades to discover these elements that we still can work on them. One of the things that you need to know that the first person reported the theory in the chemistry it was Dalton and we call it Dalton's atomic theory. So this is the person for the first time proposed the theory in the chemistry we call his theory Dalton's atomic theory. Atom in Greek language means indivisible unbreakable so as you may see here he proposed elements called co are composed of atoms and they are tiny atoms and unbreakable also he proposed that atoms are hard and spheres as well another item that he worked on all atoms of a given element are identical what does that mean this is safe it says if we for example if you work on the carbon atoms carbon atoms here in my office is the same as the carbon atom you find you may find this in other states so if we are talking about carbon carbon always is carbon if we are talking about carbon we definitely we are finding some difference between the carbon and sulfur atom two different examples of elements so they are totally different carbon and sulfur so different properties so we may consider this assumption correct and incorrect so we are talking about the theory so theory can be expired theory can have ex exceptions so we are talking about these changes in theory as well also, one thing that we need to pay attention for his theory, he said atoms combine in simple whole number ratios to form molecules of the compounds. So atoms make molecules, tiny and small things in the world, we call it bodybuilding of the atom, building block of the atom, or anything that it helps you to memorize that, it helps you to memorize that, building block of a compounds, substances, are elements, atoms. Atoms make molecules. Whenever we are going to combine molecules, molecules should combine together like a whole number, an integer number, like H2O, two hydrogen, one oxygen. We cannot say we have 2.5 hydrogen atoms. It doesn't make sense, half of atoms. So whenever we are going to talk about a compound, a chemical formula, a molecule, we need to combine the atoms by whole number and integer number. Dalton's theory or Dalton's model should be revised because we, based on the progress we have in the chemistry we are able to talk about something new in chemistry as you see in this slide in our class we work very details and here we just need to know we need to have some new theories because he could not cover some behavior of compounds and substances in the chemistry the first person work on the dalton's atomic theory he was J.J. Thompson. Thompson showed that atoms are breakable. Indivisible is totally gone. We have divisible elements, atoms. So we can break atoms. We can break it down. So if we have any atoms, we can break them up. So when we are talking about atoms, we are talking about some things can be break. So, Thompson, for the first time, he worked on this theory and he called his theory by a new type of theory in the chemistry. 
you discover the electron has subatomic particle. Electrons are subatomic particles. What does that mean? It means we are able to break the atoms. An electron is the one of the particles you may find in the atoms. He reported electrons have negative charge. Negative charge. So we may report electrons by E minus. So please memorize. J.J. Thompson discovered electron and electrons have negative charge. Another person work on Thompson model and we may call him or in Australia for in the near future and whenever we are going to talk about the latest story in the chemistry. You know that in chemistry, like physics, if you have same charge, like charge, they repel each other. Negative charges of atomic particles, they repel each other. And opposite charges attract each other. Positive attracts negative, negative attracts positive. But if we have negative and negative, or positive and positive, we have repulsion. So, just remind you regarding that. One thing that most of the time you are asked regarding the history in the chemistry is the name of Thomson model, the name of Thomson theory. He called his model or theory plum potting model. He discovered electrons as particles and he distributed electrons in a sphere, we call it atom. But he didn't know that in this sphere we have another particle, positive particle. He assumed that we have a positive cloud. This surface is positive and he put electrons in the atom. So we have positive cloud and we have particle electron as a particles, negative charge particles. So we call his model in the literature plum potting model. Thomson model we call it plum potting model. In 1911, one scientist Ernest Rutherford worked on a new history, a new model in the history of the chemistry. We call it nuclear model. Rutherford worked on the model we call his model nuclear model. So two models so far. J.J. Thompson, plum potting model, Rutherford, nuclear model. Based on the experiment, we call it gold foil experiment, and you may find the details in your textbook. Rutherford find out a new subatomic particle, we call it proton. Protons are new subatomic particles. They have positive charge. So I may ask you to memorize that. Positive charge protons. He also find out that we have another subatomic particle. We call it neutrons. Neutrons is the subatomic particle with no charge. So electron negative charge, protons positive charge, and neutron they have no charge. And they placed protons and neutrons in the nucleus. In the nucleus. That is why we call he we call his modern nuclear model. This is a history of the elements we will find in this table. Electron negative charge after electron positive are discovered and neutrons. Negative charge, positive charge for protons and no charge for neutrons. You don't know you don't need to memorize the mass of each one, but as you see here, protons and neutrons are very similar to each other in the mass, but the mass of electron is too small and sometimes is negligible. So that is why most of the time we prefer to say the mass of the electrons are negligible. In chemistry, we have these three subatomic particles. Whenever we work with the atoms or elements, we need to know this number of these subatomic particles. 
atomic number, it gives us number of protons of any elements. So to find out the number of protons, we need to know atomic number. And atomic number determines the identity of atom. If I say this atom has 11 protons, it means we always have sodium. Because based on the convention we have in the table that I'm going to show you in the next slides, always for sodium we have 11 protons. So this is like identity of atoms. Another thing that we need to know that whenever we work in the periodic table of elements, we write the number on the top. This number on the top, we call it atomic number. So whenever we have a box, the number of on the top of the chemical symbol of elements, it gives you atomic number, number of protons. But one thing you should know that for, let me skip this part back here. If you look at this here, we call it the periodic table of elements. Atomic number of elements is given here. If you look at the number on the top, we call it atomic numbers. It means hydrogen has one proton. Sodium has 11 protons. You don't need to memorize, but you just need to know that. This information, it gives you number of protons. But one more thing you should know that Whenever we are talking about atoms, atoms are neutral. It means number of protons is the same as number of electrons. Protons and electrons, positive and negative charges. So, one thing, if you have atomic number, it means you have number of protons and number of electrons as well. So, for example, for this one, if we say this element, CO, cobalt, has 27 protons, it means we have 27 electrons as well. So if we know atomic number, we are able to know two informations, number of protons and electrons. In the periodic table, we will find the elements by symbols, barium BA, iodine I. Sometimes we have two letters to report, sometimes we have one. You just need to know. Always the first letter must be a uppercase must be a capital so must be a capital B and I if we have N you just need to know this is the Norwich version do we need to memorize all chemical symbol of elements no it's impossible it's possible but it's not necessary for our class I upload I post one handout in your and on the blackboard and you will see what type of elements should be memorized as symbol and name. You, just, you don't need to memorize the atomic numbers. AU, gold, it has 79 protons and electrons. Atomic number. Alright guys, you just need to know that. Based on your handwriting, if you write CO means cobalt, if you put Letter, if you report both letters by uppercase C and O, oxygen and carbon. We are talking about the molecules because we have two different atoms. Pay attention to that one. So, as I told you, I may upload and post one handout to know what type of information you need to memorize. Only simple and name. And you may find some former name. It depends on the textbook, it depends on the author, and it depends on the year of the your textbook you may have different name but this is a present name for this symbol and elements we don't work with the former name in our class so I'm going to have a quick review if you have the periodic table of elements you should be able to answer these questions what is the atomic number of pro B you look at the B the number on the top, it gives you the atomic number. It means number of protons and electrons. On the bottom of any numbers, you will find atomic mass. Look for silicon, it says 28.09 grams, 28.09 am. Look here, always on the bottom, we have atomic mass. AMU, atomic mass unit. This is a unit 
in the commercially we apply for in the elements so two numbers one number on the top atomic number one number on the bottom we call it amu atomic mass unit how many proton does a chlorine atom have it means what is the atomic number of proton what is the atomic number of chlorine chlorine atomic number is 70 and so on so let me finish this is this video here and we continue by other videos in this chapter thank you guys